Another extraordinary day in Washington as the intern sex scandal involving President Clinton continues to unravel. Again today with PLO Chairman Yasser Arafat at his side, Clinton denies having a sexual relationship with White House intern Monica Lewinsky and that he asked her to lie about it to investigators. Meanwhile, across town, Whitewater Independent Counsel Ken Starr pledges to conclude his investigation as fast as possible. The next 48 hours could be critical as we get the latest information on this fast-moving story and what it could mean to the Clinton presidency. I'm Chris Matthews. Let's play hardball. Okay, let's get on top of this. We've got, we've got Howard Feynman of Newsweek magazine, which has been breaking this story. Howard, what does Ken Starr have sitting on his desk in terms of evidence against the president right now? Well, I think he's got a lot. I think he's got tapes, uh, not only that were made by uh, Linda Tripp, the friend of uh, Monica Lewinsky, but tapes that the federal authorities made themselves. Uh, so he's got that. Uh, he's got documentary evidence. Uh, this one memo that we talked about in what we put on America Online last night, it's a memo advising Linda Tripp on basically how to shape her testimony and lie uh, in her own deposition in the Paula Jones case. Question. Who wrote that memo? Certainly it wasn't Monica Lewinsky who gave it to Tripp. So there's documentary evidence, there's tape evidence, there may be some other kinds of evidence we don't know about. All I know is when uh, Ken Starr went to Janet Reno last, late last week and said, hey, I need to have my authority expanded, it didn't take her very long to agree and uh, urge the three-judge panel to approve. So Ken Starr's sitting there with very broad investigative authority right now. You have one third piece of evidence you didn't mention, which is that is uh, rather the, the special counsel does. Ken Starr has a copy of President Clinton's own deposition from Saturday right. in which he denied having a relationship with this woman. Well, now you have three pieces to the puzzle. You have her taped remarks, 20 hours of them saying she did have a relationship with him. You have what looks like what we call in Washington, you and I know, as talking points. In other words, prompting notes to be used as an effort to suborn perjury. And you have the, the Exhibit A, the president denying the whole thing under oath. Yeah, and that, that means there are three, three possible federal uh, uh, crimes here we're talking about uh, in felonies. We're talking about perjury if he was lying in that deposition. We're talking about obstruction of justice if there was some kind of scheme uh, to prevent the truth from coming out. And we're talking about urging people to perjure themselves. All three of those potentially felonies, all three things that Ken Starr will look at. All I can say is you know that Clinton uh, must have been having a bad day when the lightest part of his schedule was a meeting with Yasser Arafat. Yes, you're right. Well, let's talk about that first uh, salient there, that first vector, the president's possibility that he may have perjured himself. To prove that he did, and I guess Ken Starr thinks he did, he now has access to all the White House logs, who came in, who left, what phone calls were made. It seems like his uh, subpoena is so colossal that Bill Clinton must be dying right now. This guy can get in and find out what gifts he bought for the woman, the girl. He He's, can, you know, where he bought it, uh, what it was, when he talked her, when he let her in the gate, when he saw her, when she left. Isn't right. this all subpoena a bull right now? Yeah, it's, it's not only subpoena a bull, it has been subpoenaed. And my understanding is that the deposition, uh, uh, Bob Bennett, the attorney for the president, uh, tried to put forth Monica Lewinsky's affidavit uh, in which she denied any relationship with the president. Uh, in, in that proceeding uh, last Saturday, but Judge Weber Wright, who came up specifically for the purpose, said, you know, you can do whatever you want with the affidavit. I want the president to answer the question. So that was a key ruling, my understanding is, by Judge Wright requiring the president to answer and potentially setting the trap for perjury. Let's talk about this trap and how this evidence was gathered. What strikes me in this, as a real movie buff like you, Howard, I saw Donnie Brasho. You have a guy going in to see a mobster wired to collect evidence against his pal. Here you have Linda Tripp wired by the FBI director, Louis Free, appointed by Bill Clinton to go in and entrap the president, to gather evidence about a sexual liaison involving the president. Here's his FBI director trying to nail him, to sting his own boss. Sting his own boss or to sting uh, the other person alleged to have taken part in this whole scheme, which is Vernon Jordan, the incredibly important and powerful Democratic power broker here. In some ways, the Bill Clinton story we know the Vernon Jordan story we don't know and in a way the Vernon Jordan story is the more interesting one because Vernon Jordan represents what's left of the democratic power structure in this town and the immediate objective of the sting that was uh, about to be put down uh, was to try to get Monica Lewinsky to seek further advice or seek the advice of Vernon Jordan. Now Vernon Jordan today had a press conference at which he said 
Number one, Monica Lewinsky had told her that she had no sexual relations with the president. Right. My question is, how did that question come up? I mean, right. uh, strange conversation. Strange to have conversation with a, with, a, with a civilian. Let's go to former Iran-Contra prosecutor Stephen Salzberg. Mr. Salzberg, let's get back to the possibility that the president himself is incriminated here. Can a president be indicted? It's not clear that a sitting president can be prosecuted. Uh, most of us uh, believe that no president can be put on a criminal trial while he's president. He'd have to I'll be say, what good is all this Ken Starr investigation if the president cannot be prosecuted? Well, it, I say it's an open question whether he can be indicted and whether the charges would have to await the end of his presidency. But one of the things you can bet is that if Ken Starr believes there's evidence to support a criminal conviction, he's going to ask the court to permit him to turn it over to Congress. Congress will then decide whether they want to impeach. If there's an impeachment and there's a conviction, there'll be no sitting president, and he can then be prosecuted. Okay, so tell me, Stephen, about this whole question of the role of the independent counsel, the president, and possible impeachment, and the use of the FBI as an institution, as the government's chief law enforcement, I should say the chief investigative arm of the federal government. Here you have the FBI director and the Attorney General Janet Reno approving a wiring of someone to get someone to testify against the president on a sexual matter, uh, and including, in this case, the charge of suborning a perjury. How? Does, does this happen? Tell me how you think it happened, that the, that the independent counsel, like you were once, you have to go and tell me, you, procedurally, you have to get the permission of the attorney general to bring in the FBI. Is that how it has to happen? No. Um, once Ken Starr was appointed, once he assumed his role as independent counsel, he has virtually the same authority as the attorney general of the United States on most matters, which means he can call upon the Justice Department, he can call upon that portion of the Justice Department, which is the FBI, he can call upon the IRS. He can ask any federal investigative agency to do anything the attorney general would ask them but to do. But can he sting a president? Can he go in and say, I'm going to put somebody a wire on somebody so that they can collect audio evidence to be used against the president in a matter that has to do with sexual behavior, not particularly to do with Whitewater in this case? Uh, it's, I how, did he get, how did he get that scope of authority to engage the FBI in such a sting against the president without getting the approval of uh, the AG? So there's a two-step process here, which is, he did get the approval of the Attorney General, and he got the approval of the court, but as I understand it, he got that approval after he'd already arranged for this conversation to be taped. My guess is, and only Ken Starr can answer this for sure, my guess is that Ken Starr, when he heard the tapes that Ms. Tripp made on her own, believed that this was the beginning of his ability to show there's been a massive conspiracy right. to cover uh, up. Can I, can I just say, Chris, sure, so there's Howard, one other I... factor here. Apparently, Ken Starr was already looking at Vernon Jordan for Jordan, Vernon Jordan's possible role in arranging for money to be paid to Webster Hubble. Right. And, and that was and his so that was, the, that was the nexus. He already was looking at Vernon Jordan. And here, allegedly, there's other behavior by Vernon Jordan that would be somewhat similar if there's any truth to the allegations. So the bull got out of the barn here two ways. One, we have this discovery process coming out of the Paula Jones case, which allows them to go around and ask for people to, that they might have information on a possible behavior by the president, a pattern of behavior involving employees and sex and the trading between the two of them. Secondly, you've got this ongoing Whitewater investigation, and they found certain names that popped up in the investigation of the possible hush money paid to Webb Hubble, one of them being Vernon Jordan, and since this name showed up on the tape recordings, they could then use that as an excuse to pull the sting as, operation. And as, a, and as a matter of fact, the, uh, the firm Revlon, or McAndrews and Forbes, that, right. that uh, Monica Lewinsky was going to work for and that Vernon Jordan arranged to get her a job at, is the same company that paid money, some monies to Webster Hubble. So that's another overlap okay. there. That Howard, that we're going to come at. back and tell you, we're going to come back a minute later, and we're going to talk about what is the strategy of the independent council here, what seems to be a long strategy to nail the president, this president for obstruction of justice, looking for it wherever he can find it, believing it's going to be there when he gets there. We'll be back with more hardball. I want to reiterate what I said yesterday. The allegations are false, and I would never ask anybody uh, to do anything other than tell the truth. Let's get to the big issues there uh, about the nature of the re relationship and whether I suggested anybody not tell the truth. Those, that is false. Want to get an accurate forecast instantly? MSNBC.com puts the best weather information on the net at your command. With the four-day outlook, up-to-the-minute radar, and satellite photos for your area, MSNBC on the Internet makes it easy to see if you'll need your favorite sunglasses or your favorite umbrella.
goes at msnbc.com. Your local forecast is just a click away. So log on today and see for yourself. MSNBC, when you really want to know. Mix Velveeta and Hormel chili together. It's delicious. It's At a time like this, there are several things you might find useful. Some more useful than others. Build, test, and manage business software, four out of five of the world's largest corporations rely on CompuWare. What do you need most? Hi, my name is Sierra, and this is my Gateway commercial. If you want to buy a computer, call my mom. She's right back here. Hi, Mom. Hi, Sierra. She knows a lot about computers, and she's... Really nice. PC software and monitor for $14.99? That's right. She really is nice. Don't forget the color printer, too. You should call my mom. Gateway computers feature Intel Pentium processors with MMX technology. Give us a call. You've got a friend in the business. When I have arthritis pain, I want relief fast. I can't wait. When I rub in Asper Cream, it brings fast relief for minor arthritis pain. The relief lasts for hours, and it's odor-free. Asper Cream, pain relief without aspirin. We're testing Arm & Hammer Super Scoop. Litter box odors are the worst. It's the baking soda clumping litter. Look, Arm & Hammer clumps better. It's easy to scoop. The odor clumps lift right out. Just one scoop. That's it. New Arm & Hammer Super Scoop, the super way to scoop odor away. We use appropriate investigative techniques that are traditional law enforcement techniques. We conduct this investigation the way any other investigation would be conducted. We're back. Let's talk to Tucker Carlson. Tucker, before you get into this, I want to ask, uh, suggest a couple of things. It seems to me if you're sitting in the White House, three lines of attack are coming directly into your face. One is this process of discovery, which is authorized under the civil statutes. You're allowed in a civil case to go out and collect the information that might be helpful to your client, in this case, Paula Jones, to prove that the President of the United States engaged in a conduct, a pattern of conduct of uh, confusing work uh, matters with love matters or sex matters and using one for the other, et cetera, et cetera. So they were out looking. They find this person, Linda Tripp, who has some reason for whatever reason to bring the truth, maybe just good citizenship, maybe it's a citizen's arrest. She brings forward this information. Then you've got the Whitewater Council, Ken Starr, who's out to get the president. That's his job to catch the president, who's got this authority to wire someone, use like a Donny Brasho kind of mob wire on this person, to nail them. So you have a lot of ingredients here. You have the authority of discovery, of the authority of, uh, of wiring someone, using the FBI as an instrument, as an agent. And then you have a person with a motive to bring it out. We don't have a John Dean here. We have a friend of John Dean. We have somebody close to the case who is willing to spring the evidence. What's new from your end? Well, I mean, I think you're right. I mean, it was this sort of weird confluence of events and a very unfortunate one for Clinton. I think what's interesting about this is, though, normally there's a disconnect between the gossip you hear that surrounds a news story and the facts as they emerge. In this right. case, you're finding a very close tracking between what the tapes say or what we hear they say and what the evidence supports. For instance, we heard that the tapes say that uh, Monica Lewinsky claims in the tapes that she received a dress from Clinton. Well, apparently now it has emerged that in his Paula Jones deposition, he admitted, the president admitted, that he gave a dress to Ms. Lewinsky. Interesting to find out how he explains that. We also heard uh, that she met with Vernon Jordan. He's admitted that meeting took place. She talked about Ambassador Richardson. Right. That apparently is true, too. So it makes you wonder what isn't true in these tapes. That's a very disturbing trend. The Clinton administration. Yeah, I think I think that compartment has flooded to use Titanic language here. <laughs> the <laughs> argument that it's just rumors because you know all through the '92 campaign, Jennifer Flowers was just rumors, and a lot of us in the standard press didn't give much attention to that story. We noted it, we didn't play it up. Uh, Chris, if, if if this if this was a setup, and if there were a lot of immediately uh, exculpatory, as they say, bits of evidence, if the White House logs or other things right. immediately showed that this woman was fantasizing the whole thing to her friend on the telephone. We'd be hearing about it. Minute by minute, the, the sort of sullen, uh, frightened silence that you get out of the White House is very damning all the way around. 
And we're also discovering for those that there was a lot of my real liberal, real Clintonite friends who were defending the president until very recently against the charge he had this affair with Jennifer Flowers, even though the tapes were available by anybody who went to see the movie uh, The War Room. There they were, him on the phone with her telling her how to cover up. Well, now telling a woman how to cover up becomes illegal, right, Mr. Salzberg? It's illegal. Uh, there's no doubt about it, if true. Um, telling somebody to testify falsely and telling them how to do it is both Subornation of perjury, and it's also obstruction of justice, called witness tampering. But you know, in other I words, think, it's not hearsay to tell. Some, if you say that someone told you to break a law, if someone said go kill that person, that's not hearsay. That's that's witness, right? That's proper. Well, you got to distinguish two things. When she says on the tape that the president told me to do this, that's hearsay. If she comes into court and says the president told me to do it. And that's testimony that's admissible. If she, in other words, if she recants her tape the way that Josh Steiner did a couple of years ago at the, Justice, at the, at the Treasury Department, one of the other young Clinton aides to get in trouble, he denied his own diary. I mean, that's one of the strangest recantations. You have to go back to the Middle Ages to get people to deny their diaries. She would have to go out and deny 20 hours of personal tape recordings, though. Wouldn't that be awful hard to do that in court, Steve? It would be. It, it, it seems that most of us believe it would be not only hard, but it would be incredible. She could... What's going to happen here, I'm almost sure, is she's going to take the Fifth Amendment before right. a grand jury. She's going to get immunity. She's going to have to testify. And at that point, she either testifies truthfully or she's prosecuted for perjury. If she testifies truthfully and corroborates the tapes, and as Howard was saying, you know, you look at all this evidence right. coming out, and nobody says there's anything out there that's, that's inconsistent with this, then she's a big problem for the Steve, White House. Steve, this is an interpretive question. Maybe you can take a crack at it. It seems to be in the last go-round with Paula Jones. The first tactic of the White House was to go out and trash this woman, call her trailer park trash, say she's in it for the money, make fun of her class background, her background, period, make fun of her motive, really get her angry. She got so angry, she brought this charge against the president, and she got so angry, she even got the information that we're now learning uh, about his other relationships, apparently. So that was a bad fight to make. Will they try that again to trash this woman, Monica, make her look a little nuts, a little dick? Uh, well, they're already no, the fact she's a young woman. I, I, dis I don't think so, if I may say. I, don't, I think you've got to listen to what Vernon Jordan said at his press conference today. I guarantee you Vernon Jordan did not give that statement today without consulting with uh, the White House. Right. And about Monica Lewinsky, he was full of praise, uh, right. a woman of drive, ambition, and great personality. He was pouring praise all over her. The other thing is that Vernon Jordan said, I never in any way suggested or told her that she should lie. To me, that means he might have told her a lot of other things, like, you know, you don't have to say anything if you don't want to. You right. don't have to come forward if you don't want to. And the professor can tell me that that, uh, if I'm wrong, but that type of comment would probably stop short of, uh, of the kind of felonies we're but, talking about. But this about. is taking place, keep in mind, on, on a couple different levels. I mean, it's one thing for Vernon Jordan to get on television or, or James Carville and say she's a wonderful girl and we support her in every sense. It's quite another what the White House and people who support the White House are telling reporters on background. Right. And a lot of what they're saying is this is a woman, someone told me yesterday, this is a woman who stalked the president, who's mentally right. unbalanced, whose okay, affections are not Okay, we're back to that department again. That is exactly right. what they That's did right. last but, time. But, we're going to come back and talk more hardball. We're talking damage control for the next seven minutes. Come back and let's talk about how they're going to save themselves. Don't you wish there was a place where the people making news are asked hard questions? Go at me. Well, no. Where people who report the news tell what's really going on. Well, that's insanity. A show where politicians actually tell the truth. I'm not letting him off at nothing. Where the interviewer is not afraid to speak his mind. I've had it with these people. The place is MSNBC. The man is Don Imus. And the show is... Imus in the morning. Get the real stories behind the news. Weekday mornings on MSNBC. Oddest looking group of people I've ever seen. All through high school, I spent my summers volunteering at a camp for blind kids in Washington, D.C. We did the usual camp things, swam, arts and crafts, sang songs. I may have been helping the campers, but they opened my eyes to a whole new world and shaped me in ways I never imagined and will never forget. So volunteer, because when you give, you always get back. And the more you care, the better you'll feel. The very thought of you And I forget to do The little ordinary things That everyone ought to do It's just the thought of you 
Prime Star presents a special sports solution update. All of your local pro and amateur sports coverage will come from the Sports Channel in your hometown region. It's the only regional channel in your basic service. This eliminates program duplication. However, on some nights, you may find additional channels showing other pro teams when those games are available in your area. For an up-to-the-minute listing of all the sports channels that Prime Star offers, tune to our Sports Preview Channel 166. More sports and less duplication. That's the Prime Star Sports Solution. Look what you're missing this Saturday if you don't have Hollywood Hits. Movies from all the major studios on multi-channel HBO, multi-channel Showtime, and multi-channel stars. The People vs. Larry Flint on HBO, Alaska on Showtime, and Scream on Stars, all playing this Saturday. To order Hollywood Hits, call your local Prime Star distributor. Tune to Prime Star's Movie Preview Channel 99 for this Saturday's feature start times. Ms. Lewinsky told me in no uncertain terms that she did not have a sexual relationship with the president. At no time did I ever say, suggest, or intimate to her that she should lie. Howard Feynman, what do you make of that statement by uh, Vernon Jordan? Is uh, that very, carefully stated or is very that Very carefully uh, stated, although, gutsy? again, I have to repeat, in, in emphatically saying that she had told him that there was no sexual relationship, that begs the question, how did, the, how did that topic come up in their conversation? When was Vernon Jordan talking to Monica Lewinsky when the topic of uh, whether she had sex with the president or not uh, arose? I'd like to know that, and so that was not necessarily uh, a great piece of strategy. On the yeah, other point, in other ways, it also took uh, Mr. Jordan, who's a bright fellow, to say the least, uh, and a very political fellow, as we all know in Washington. He's one of the real Washington right. figures. Uh, it took him two days to get beyond no comment. Yeah, and it's an awful he, long time to say the obvious. If you never had a conversation with her about this very tricky subject, right. or you never advised her in any way you were embarrassed by, and, just spit it out. What's and, the reason? Don't wait right. two days to get it and, right. Get your then, words right. And then, and then he was, you know, the word went out there was going to be this press conference or availability right. of some kind. Turned out not to be a press conference. This guy marching in, giving a very carefully crafted and lawyered statement. Although right. not necessarily a shrewd one. No, and reading then leave it too. It. And Howard, then leave he was it. reading. He was reading. And yeah. I didn't think Vernon Jordan had to read anything. I think he was a guy who always talked from his gut. You know, I, I guess the other thing is, uh, is the whole matter in which the president, uh, all of us talking right now, I, I think I'll include Steve in that, are students of this president. He is without doubt the most amazing man of our generation in terms of being a, a great politician. He can, he can square his circle right in front of you sometimes. I have never seen him so uneasy, Howard. Well, uh, that clip of him with Yasser Arafat, uh, you know, he looked like a very uncomfortable man, and he was doing the, the uh, you know, the hurt dance there uh, rhetorically. You know, I would never uh, do any such thing. Let's look at the big issues. I mean, the sentences didn't right. parse. There was no logic to it. He just wanted to get the heck off the stage as fast as possible. Let me go to Stephen. Let, let's go to Stephen Salzberg about the, the the imminent prosecution or investigation that's it's now being commenced. Is it easier to prove? that the president lied under oath last Saturday in denying this uh, relationship than it is to prove that the president suborned perjury? I believe it's easier to prove that he lied under oath because one thing we know is if somebody had an affair for a year and a half and they're asked, did you have an affair? And they say no. If that turns out to be untrue, it's perjury. It's a flat out lie. And Chris, the one thing that I've not seen anybody mention is the biggest yeah. problem I think right now that the White House faces is that Ms. Lewinsky is undoubtedly guilty if these stories are true. She's undoubtedly, undoubtedly guilty herself of witness tampering. If she passed on an outline of how to lie to Linda Tripp, right. then that is a violation of federal law punishable by up to 10 years in prison. And so you as an independent counsel like yourself, I'm so sorry, should you be in the shoes right now of Ken Starr? You can imagine him saying to this young lady, come down to my office, I want to tell you a couple of things. Let me explain to you the perjury statute. Let me explain to you the statute involving suborning a perjury. I've got you on two counts here, young lady. That's 10 years hey, in federal prison. Chris, Chris can Maximum I? Maximum security if I want to put you there. Do you want to go there or do you want to tell the truth? Can he do that? Oh, he's, he not only can do it, but... The more important than her affidavit, in my judgment, is the fact that what she says, and Linda Tripp apparently will testify to, 
is that Ms. Ms. Uh, that the, the, this, this woman urged Ms. Tripp to commit perjury. That itself is a crime, it's obstruction, and that is punishable by up to 10 years in prison. It's a powerful weapon, the independent counsel. Chris, can I, can, I ask, can, I no, Steve, Tucker. can I just ask Steve a quick question? Is that memo, that, 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 that thing on how to lie, to, you know, is that a piece of primer? I mean, what's the evidentiary state of that thing? I mean, that's not hearsay, right? I mean, that's... It's not hearsay, at Howard. It's not being offered for the truth. It's being offered to show how you a set into motion a lie. And, right. and actually, it doesn't matter as, as, uh, who wrote it. The person who passes it on to a potential right. witness is as guilty as the person who wrote it. Steve Howard Tucker, thanks for joining us. Rivera lies up next with his take on the president's debacle. See you all tomorrow night for a special hour-long edition of Hardball. We start at 8 p.m. Eastern time, a half hour early. Tim Russell will be joining me, among others. See you then.